Yeah, well, um, working from home um, in a self-quarantine setting, uh, doing a keynote is definitely a new experience, uh, but I'm looking very much forward to it. So right now sharing my screen, just checking in with you, Derek, if it's working. Yep, can see it. Then, um, yeah, you asked me actually to have a to have a talk to have a talk about fostering innovation and when when you and Wouter asked me this actually i was thinking about okay there are many ways to talk about fostering innovation but for this specific audience and for this when we are in this industry i'd like to talk about the importance and also the the right way forward uh, in fostering innovation in a brick world what I mean with the brick world is, of course, um, yeah, it's, it's the real estate world. Because innovation in, in a world where products need to last and stand for many years is a completely different ball game than in a consumer product uh, world. Um, so therefore, it might also be not even that unlogical that if, if you read the news that you actually see that the real estate industry um, maybe specifically in Europe, uh, shows to be slow in adopting new technologies. Um, we're lagging behind, the real estate industry is lagging behind in terms of digitization. Um, recently, one of our customers, and also um, I heard saying that there is more smartness in a Fiat Panda car than there is in an average, um, uh, in a smart home or in a home at all. This makes you think that the, the, the place in which we spend most of our time, um, actually the places we spend 90% of our time uh, inside buildings, inside our homes, inside offices, still lag very much behind uh, uh, when you look at all kinds of uh, technologies, which are, for example, already more and more adapted in um, automotive or other industries. So. What I want to share today is, is not the, an expansion on this problem. It's how we at our organization have been dealing with this. Uh, we started our organization six years ago. Uh, and ever since that moment, it, it has felt like this. Uh, uh, being a small, hopefully uh, orange uh, glowing fish in a big sea, swimming against the current. So you really try to, to do something different, to show others that you're doing something different, but everyone is, 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 is moving into, the right, into a different direction without knowing uh, it might be the wrong direction. And this metaphor or this analogy um, is what I'd like to uh, use throughout this presentation. Um, that the importance of swimming against the current, but as well uh, that um, after um, a period of time, it's, it's crucial to, to get others on board, to get others on board and to not only swim against the current, but try to change the current. Um, and to do so, it's, it's very important to, to start off somewhere. And that's what we did. We started six years ago with an idea. It was literally an idea um, as still university grad st students uh, was an idea to generate electricity with windows. Why with windows? Because there's so much glass around the world. Uh, and we had a, some intellectual property developed together with our professor uh, that could uh, help us in generating electricity on the window. But it was just an idea. And how, how to bring that into an idea, that idea into a product has been a very, very long road. And the product also turned out to be something completely different than we anticipated uh, on all the way uh, back at the start. And where we started with an electricity generating window, we now offer actually a full smart building solution and in this uh, full smart build, uh, integrated smart building solution, we integrate sensors, we integrate solar cells, we integrate batteries, 
systems. We have self-learning algorithms that can do dynamic sun shading, uh, but that can also proactively uh, uh, make decisions on better uh, energy consumption of building installation systems and it give users it can give users and owners insights on their the building but also on their business and i think coming from six years ago starting off with a a a um uh concept that uh, produced energy uh on itself in a window going all the way to this smart uh, integrated complete solution uh, for building owners and um, developers the fact that we've gotten to this uh, through this transition uh, it, it, it can only be done because we listened while we were developing and while we were swimming against the current we listened to uh, potential customers to potential partners to potential um investors and um when you're developing a software app and you listen to everyone you meet and every potential customer overnight you can make the changes or um, um add the new updates you have uh, learned uh, along the way but if you're building hardware if you're building hardware it's much more difficult to have sort of this learning by doing mentality. You will, you will encounter a lot of failures. We did encounter a lot of failures. This is a picture I think when I show it to our team, we, they, they, they already get tired. It hangs in our office because uh, it was one of our first power windows we ever made and it, and it broke down and shattered into a thousand pieces. But it, it perfectly illustrates that while you are learning by doing, especially with, with, with hardware, you'll get your hands dirty. And if you're not careful, you'll actually um, get some cuts and scratches along the way. But if you learn from your mistakes and if you go from failure towards success, you actually really have, can have something to be proud of. You can really uh, develop technologies that uh, might change an industry, that might change the way we think, it might also change the way we uh, do our day-to-day -day business. And um while i was sort of going back through this history going back into our timeline of going from this uh startup into yeah a, a full a fully operational up and running organization with 50 plus people from i think it's about 13 countries worldwide working in delft at various locations i think we, we have three uh office locations but by now that everybody's working from home we have yeah more than 50, 50 locations we are working from and everybody needs to be aligned everybody needs to be aligned on one topic and that's our mission and i looked back at this history and i thought how can i turn our story into a valuable lesson for others or valuable information or a path uh, that others could use to also apply uh, in their own way of work but also in their own um uh, challenges or maybe even adventures so uh dear audience um uh, viewers and streamers i see uh i can that's not great of the technology i can see all the streamers right now um please be oh, write down these lessons because they might come in handy and actually they're quite simple so maybe you don't even have to write anything down you can just uh, remember it by heart so first of all to achieve system innovation because I think that's what's needed all the time when you want to change something in the real estate industry you cannot just change one part of it you really have to change the entire system that's that's a given fact but if you ever want to change something in uh, real estate make sure that you prepare yourself for system innovation and to achieve system innovation besides being patient very patient you really have to wait in our long sales cycles uh, you have to convince partners you have to do step by step uh, improvements of your technology uh, but besides the patients you need to focus on two things and those two things are content and people 
you have to make sure these two things are perfectly in order and they're perfectly aligned to your mission. So let me start, um, uh, let me see, yeah, let me start explaining what I mean with that. Let me start explaining uh, with content first. So how to get your content in order if you want to achieve system innovation? Well, first of all, you have to find the problem, analyze the problem and own the problem. You really need to know what is the problem we are going to solve. And for us, this problem really was that the built environment is consuming 40% of the total global energy consumption. So to repeat that once more, 40% of all energy being consumed over the world is being consumed by buildings. That's the problem we see uh, that's holding back the energy transition. And we want to own this problem. We want, we, we, we actually own our owning this problem. And ever since the first day we started, we started dreaming of the solution. And luckily, every night you have an opportunity to dream. And every night or every day even, you can improve your dream and you can pivot your dream and you can make it uh, every time a bit better. However, it should still be about solving that one problem, owning that one problem. And once you do that, once you keep on dreaming of the solution, and once you're open to changes in your plan, you actually are making it your mission. You're making your mission to solve the problem you have decided to own. And once you've done this, um, you have at least one part of getting to uh, system innovation in order, and that's the content. Because you own the problem, you, you day and night dream about the solution and it's your mission to solve the problem then you have to make sure you're, you're going to align the people and first of all you have to find the right people find the right people means find co-founders found uh, first uh, uh, team members find first interns find first ambassadors find first customers find first investors you really and it are not just first interns or first uh, investors. It are the right first interns and the right first investors. If you ever get an investor on board that actually is not as driven as you or a customer on board that is in the beginning, which is not as driven as you to or aligned with you with the same problem you are solving, you're going to um, uh, face challenges and have to deal with more problems along the road. So make sure that you find the right people. And then once you start finding and once you know what the right people are, you have to start building a community. And building this community goes beyond just your, your, your team or your employees or the organization you have yourself. A community reaches out to, to your, your, your accountants and your lawyers, but also to your your suppliers, your, in our case, the dark glass manufacturers who have always been very competitive towards each other because it's a very consolidated environment. But um, ever since they're working with us, they, they, they seem to get more and more aligned because we're working on the same problem. And, and, and in that way, even competition can be part and build a community together. So find the right people and then together with these people start building a community and make sure that everybody knows that they are a part of the the solution they are a piece of the puzzle just like your 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 embedded engineer is a part of the solution uh, your customer uh, trusting you to do a project is just a, an even big part of the uh, solution you have to but you have to make sure that your your customers but also your partners and employees understand that they are part of the change they are not just making a decision and then the next day nothing that the decision will not have any effect of on on the, the developments you're on no every decision is part of the system innovation um so um if you have these th these two things aligned of both content and people 
then and only then uh, you can get to disruptive system innovation. And a disruptive system innovation is uh, something uh, which we st are still on, on their way of achieving. I think we, we have come very, very far along the road and I think we have already made some amazing disruptive uh, system innovation steps. Um, but once you have initiated, you also have to make sure it, it, it is going to be a innovation that will survive. And for such, I, I made the following um, uh, comparison. Um, so th these are non-copyrighted uh, terms, uh, but above you see kamikaze innovation. It's you have a great idea and you have a, maybe even a great product and you just go out there and you go and try to swim as, as fast as possible. But after a certain time, the current will change and all these sharks, they will come after you. And, and, and whatever you have, they'll take it from you. And um, whether they will take it and, and turn it into part of their own products or own technology, or just make sure that it, it doesn't become available anymore, your innovation will disappear because it's, it hasn't been part of the system. It's not part of the, 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 uh, uh, the system disruption. So therefore, what system innovation truly means, it's still leading. So you still should, should be ahead of others, but you should bring along others. And that's what system innovation is to me. And I think that's what, 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 what we have learned over the past years is that you should bring your partners and your customers and your clients and your team members all along because um, it, 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 it's, it's a long road to get an entire industry changed. So having that said, um, I, I hope the, my message lands on the importance of not for just innovation itself, but making it broader, realizing for yourself that it's not innovation, it's system innovation. And that for system innovation, you have to align your content and you have to align your people. And the way we did it is as follows. Uh, we, we very clearly analyzed our problem. And as I said in the beginning, it's, um, it's, it, it's regarding an energy neutral tomorrow. Um, and our, the problem is that we spend 90% of our time inside. I think during COVID-19, this number has probably even gotten up further but we spend a lot of time almost all of our time inside and that's why buildings consume 40 percent of the global energy demand and this is the problem we decided to own and because we didn't focus on our first launch or the first concept we ever had we were able to actually develop from an electricity generating window to a full-on smart skin a smart skin as a solution for a dynamic uh, office uh, and what is it what smart skin actually now does it's currently what we offer for customers is that we install smart windows in a building all these windows uh, so that's the main concept the smart window building block uh, in our smart windows we have sensor modules sense modules and we have um, electricity generating uh, power bars so solar cells but as well, we connect our smart windows to smart blinds, which can be on the inside, outside of the window or of the building. And this is the basic building block of our total solution. We have smart windows that on the entire building sense whatever energy is coming in, whether it's temperature, whether it's light or any other way that it's coming in, or if it's going out, we know uh, what is going on in the, in the, in the facade of the building. And then we have two other components. We have our sense component and we have our power component. And in our sense component, we make sure that also throughout the rest of the building, we have sensor nodes, we have uh, servers that make the right uh, predictions, calculations uh, to make sure a building can significantly reduce its energy consumption. Um, but to do so, we also need to have the power side and the power side consists of battery systems our power hubs but also smaller um, power boxes which are ways of communicating with the users combining these three elements so the sense 
the smart window and the power makes enables us right now today to save more than 30 percent of the total energy consumption of a building and if you take that number 30 percent and if you realize that globally the all the energy being consumed um, uh, comes from bu uh, from buildings uh, for 40 percent then you can realize that with, if we would apply our solution on all buildings worldwide, we would already be able to tackle um, uh, uh, if twelve and a half percent of the total global energy problem. So that's that's the potential technologies can have by saving thirty percent on one building and applying it to all buildings globe, on a global level, you actually know that we can um, reduce the total global energy consumption with 12.5%. And that's, and that's a big number. On a global level, if you're able to, to reduce the energy consumption with 12.5%, that makes it worth fighting for. That makes it worth developing. That makes it worth going from uh, technology to uh, product and going from partner to customer to investor. Um, so by now we think that we uh, more or less have our um, uh, our technology aligned because with these three components, sense, smart window and power, uh, we, we can have a lot of functionalities uh, for our customers. We can make sure that they never have annoying glare in their eyes in buildings, uh, that we have proactive algorithms that help them reduce energy, but can also increase the comfort in buildings. We have a connection to heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. We can make sure that our smart skin opens and closes windows for more natural ventilation, which is more important during these uh, COVID-19 times where uh, air quality is one of the more important prioritize topics in uh, office environments. Uh, we can also provide for sustainable lighting to always make sure that you optimize your daylight. Uh, and we can give building insights. We can give building insights on energy usage, on comfort levels, but also on how to yeah, do better asset management. And we have only gotten here, we have only gotten to make this content right uh, because we had the people we had the right people and we have people coming from all parts and places of all over the world that are really working together on this mission and that are working together on uh, uh, the pro problem that we decided to own. But it goes beyond our own organization, as I said. Uh, we also managed to get investors and shareholders that at a certain point, um, for example, to, to, to take uh, Dan van der Form who just said it's also up to us, to our industry itself, to just uh, take ownership and to take responsibility and to invest in tech, the technologies that have the potential to, to change the perspective of the real estate industry and therewith uh, of, 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 of our environment. Uh, but besides investors, we also made sure that we, we where we find the right uh, people that to supervise us and to advise us and to guide us through a world where the current still is going into the wrong direction. And uh, having now, after six years, having our content straight, having a great technology, uh, being able to install in that on a daily basis, but also having the right people aboard uh, makes us still able to act, to act on a daily basis, but also to continue dreaming uh, big as we've been doing from the get-go. And my strong recommendation to everyone is to, to <clears throat> not only act now and not only to dream big, but to make sure that you get both the content and the people in order, and then you can achieve great innovation even in a brick world. Derek, um, I, I hope uh, this uh, presentation has landed for you. For me, it was a pleasure to give it. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. 
Uh, yes, Ferdinand, thank you for that. That was a very uh, insightful presentation. I enjoyed it. And we do have a question that has come in. So I'll read it out for you. Uh, this is from Ben Vinton. Ferdinand, amazing tech and amazing solution. And I especially like your bullish calculations aspirations to reduce worldwide energy consumption by 12.5%. Is there a certain building use or style design, um, say the age, construction method, or internal systems of a building that are required to facilitate the savings you target? No, not specifically. So, um our solution can be applied on, on every type of building, uh, both in new construction as in retrofit. Uh, we actually see the renovation, of course, as the largest uh, focus point, but also market. Because there are just so many buildings that have been designed and developed and built years and years ago, uh, where the architect and contractors never had in mind to make it energy efficient. So, um, if you have, if there is an already existing building, you just, whatever shape, form, or size it has, you just have to remember that all energy flows go through the facade or in the roof. All the heat that is escaping out of the building or is going into the building goes through the facades. So, whatever dimensions, um, if you apply a smart layer onto this, that actually senses exactly the type of light or type of heat coming in or out, then you can proactively make sure that you don't have these energy losses. And that will make sure that you don't have to um, cool or heat um, uh, as a more reactive uh, problem solving solution for it. So towards Ben, if you want to know more, please reach out. Uh, our website can be easily found on uh, uh, powerwindow.com, which was our actual technology, but also on Fizi, which is P-H-Y-S-E dot E-U.